Here we go. Back up on 12. It's going to be Midget out of the gate down below. They're both going to be down below fighting over this rocket launcher, but it's going to be Crisis's shotgun that wins out the first fight. Oh, man, I was hoping for a telefrag, but Midget made good on it, tying it back up with the Gunblade shot. And really, it's the Gunblade that's just like a critical factor in Warsaw compared to other games. Like, the ability for a first spawn to do that much damage is just incredible, and it means that you really have to make sure that all of your fights, you know, you get away cleanly and you're able to uh, you're able to recover and turn it into actual control. Easier said than done in Warsaw, more than enough with other games. But man, really good rockets coming out of Midget here. Should be able to do a lot of damage on the Mega Spawn. Of course, it won't be up for a long ass time. Red will be back up here. Midget's in the wrong place for a grab, but man, he can take Crisis down. He's not getting away with shit there. So it's a good thing that Midget solved his issues because he's obviously got his headphones on straight. So, still a lot of time before that Mega comes back up. And yeah, okay, yeah, the Mega Ride does make sense with the uh, the old school timing. This bridge is going completely silent now, taking away this yellow armor. It's going to mean giving away a red armor over to Crisis. The first one he's really ever had to give away in this match, but really didn't have to do that. But he's actually a little bit light on weapons here at the moment. He's got rockets to defend with, but uh, Mega's going to be up. He's got his left ear pressed against Crisis right now. Wants to do some damage and at least do some damage when Crisis tries to come out the other way. But he's leaving up that Mega now. He's got to head back to it at some point. Like, there's the damage dealt out. He can take top of the map now, but now he's got to just bury his ass over here. There we go. But he's got the pickup now and took relatively little damage, but all of that, you know, not all that much came of it. So everything comes down to this, you know, rocket on rocket close range fight. And there wasn't too much setup from either player for it, really. But there's three on one now. Midget taking it away. And Red will be back up here, actually. That fight lasted so long, he was able to get that, that respawn. So now, with nothing to worry about on the map, Midget's got to find out how he can put pressure on Crisis. And Crisis is really answering a lot of that form, showing up way, way early on this Mega. And look at the rails coming out of Midget. Holy crap, he's looking for the last one. Looking to finish off with Rockets or LG, and there it is, with another rail right off the spawn. And yeah, Crisis is like, fuck, just fine, fine. Let's get that, that restart. So we're going to have both Mega and Red up on the board now. Midget taking a choice. We have one of the yellow armors taken from down below, and look at this midget looking to cut him off, but getting a little too invested in that fight, maybe. He needed not to get bounced around so much. He's going to be losing a lot more of his armor now. But there's that mega taken away. Crisis is leaving it now, but easily he could have thrown down one rocket and just left that fight and gotten that mega a lot more effortlessly. But be that as it may, he got away with it anyway. He's still got wide timing between mega and red. But he left up the timing on red. It was free red for Crisis, but man, it's not going to be lasting long. Not with these rails and rockets, but it's going to be traded damage here. So this is all actually, all things considered, pretty damn good for Crisis. The fact that he got away with that alive, did a lot of damage on Midget. And started the timer back up for the Mega Health. Now, the next red armor is going to be critical. Midget's crawling around for it. He's not willing to miss another one. He's going to be there. But in fact, he's looking more focused on hurting Crisis now. Crisis thought, all right, if I give him the red, I can get away with this. I can get my Mega back up and we'll be all right. Nope, not so much. But it still might work out for him all right. He's just going to be giving up that red in favor of yellow. But that was actually the right decision. It was a little bit more conservative then. But we're still looking at six on one. Six minutes left on the clock. Midget just covering all of his bases. I mean, he's really not going into the back hallways all that much. He's really picking his territory wisely here, even if it means that sometimes he's missing an item. It's worked out so far for him. And let's be honest, most of the time he's only missing these reds and not the megas. It's a little bit odd because, I mean, the reds just come up so much more often. They're usually prioritized, but... He's taking a fairly low-risk approach to this map. He's making sure that he's in a position so that he can get that Mega for free or at a relatively low risk. Whereas, you know, going into the Red Armor Room at any point is always going to be risky. He's like, all right, if I could just damage him at the Red, like, two times out of three, then cool. And if I get that Mega for free and I can take away the Yellow, you know, that, that's a hell of a lot better. It's very similar to 
the way DM5 used to be played, where you know, one guy is getting the red most of the time, and the other guy is getting the mega and the yellow most of the time. And it's played completely differently now. I like how the pace of the game has evolved over the years. But this is a map where you still see that sort of dynamic. Alright, so Midget taking a little bit of heat here. But still been able to take away YA. And really this entire room with very little to worry about. And because the timing of the Mega Health is so much more flexible and so much more ambiguous, uh, any time that Crisis wants to push in is just always the wrong time. Like, he's got no way to, like, run in and go, I'm going to get Mega now, with actually knowing the timing of the Mega. It's a midget down below. He's just looking for the drop down and fade away. And yeah, so yeah, Crisis pushes in there once again with just no idea whether or not it's the right thing to be doing at that point. So midget's leaving it up here. Looks like you wanted to turn that into a trade, though, like a, an actual area trade. But man, it's going to be a really risky play for him. One that doesn't work out all that well either. So it's going to be three frags up for Crisis now. Let's go take a look at him. See if we can actually pull this back together. Crisis still has to wait on it, which is, again, Midget's advantage. I mean, if Crisis is willing to wait on it, then Midget's going to push on that. So Meg's going to be back up. There's the takeaway by Midget. It's not weird, it's just the way quick... Alright, so the Mega Timing is 20 seconds after it goes away from your health. So, you know, it gives you 100 health. The moment you go down to under 100 health, you know, it starts down the, the 20 second counter. Which means that most of the time the guy who last got it has the advantage in being able to gauge when it's showing up. But it also means that item trades happen a lot less often. Uh, the uh, the shift in momentum of the map is a lot less binary than it is in something like Quake 3 or Quake 4, which I like. And this isn't to say anything bad about Quake 3 or Quake 4 at all. I love Quake, if you haven't gotten the fucking hint. But I appreciate how these little changes can drastically change the, the feel and the pacing of a match. I, I just love how little tweaks like that can result in just drastically different game types, which is just fucking cool. Anyway, three on one, on nine. Crisis armorless at the moment, but coming back in for the red. Really, he wants just anything right now that'll help, but he's going to be leaving that red up. Oh, just a little bit too long. It was like, oh, do I have an EB? No, I don't have an EB. Well, crap. But Mid has been able to get, like, quite a few just free frags off the spawns. And again, it, it's likely due to his conservative approach here. He's doing a little bit of damage at red. He's taking a red if he feels like he, he can get away with it. But most of the time, he's just focused on the Mega and the YA. Which, again, just leads to a lot of ambiguity on Crisis' end. Like, when do I push it on Mega? You know, how do I push it on Mega? Do I push it on Mega at all? Is that yellow armor up? Oof. Uh, this is actually had a question about where this game came from technology-wise. This is actually based on Q Fusion, which was a standalone uh, port, essentially, of, of the Quake 2 source code. So this is actually way down deep inside. This is Quake 2, more Quake 2 than Quake 3. But that's just the technology. It's, it's obviously a very different game. All right, so one minute left on the clock here. Ooh. Damn, and yeah, Crisis has just had a hell of a time just figuring out just how to pace out his fights. He's had to just kind of roll a dice every time he wants to move into the Mega Room. And most of the time I see this map played, like, the Mega Room isn't really used that often as it's, like, a camping spot. And not to say that he's camping, but he's spending more time there than not. Let's be honest. But most of the time it's like, all right, got yellow, got mega, let's get the hell out of here. But he's actually doing a really cool thing by, like, making it his place. So Crisis, again, he's just having to play the guessing game. Like, he's walking into the room with, like, no real incentive to get yellow. Because he's got red. But he's got no timing on mega. It's awkward as hell for him. But I like that. It's well played by Midget. So very solid game. I mean, not the fastest game in the world, but man, Midget just like 
play that one out like a champ. Very cool strat. But there we have it. 14 on three. It's, let's do this. All right, Midget. We spawning in uh, sort of an awkward place. It was like, yeah, you can pop through Tella. It's a great rocket launcher. But then it's like, ah, uh, now, uh, fine. But holy crap. Rocket to rail. What the hell, Midget? You're just like squatting a fly there. And now you're like looking around like, oh, right. What was I supposed to be doing here? Jeez. So Mega's gone. Red's gone. Fairly standard there. But now Midget's one frag up and... Crisis is playing from a catch up place of getting weapons. Midget, nice gun blade hop. Ooh, he needed that shot though. Because these rocks are a little bit too dangerous. He's not taking too much damage yet, but there's the red armor back in Crisis' hands. 13 seconds left to the Mega, and Midget's coming back over here a little bit too early. Especially down here mid tier. It's a tough place to defend, so he's going to be leaving it up. Trying to throw off a little bit of long range damage, but this is Crisis really effectively muscling in and grabbing, you know, both Red and Mega. So well done there. But no, I'm just making a pretty good case out of uh, out of the yellows. Oh man, but he's just trying to dance around that Red, get the grab without getting taken out too quickly. But man, that'll be Midget going down here. So one on one, a minute and a half in, take away top of the map. Making sure that he's got all the range possibilities to work with. Close range with rockets. But Midget really doesn't have a stack to justify that sort of close range, I hurt you, you hurt me fight. He's going to need a little bit more to justify that. Something like a long range rail like that, beautifully done. But is it really enough to push in with? Well, he's going to take away the 225s. I have to cross the map to get back over to Mega. But it sounds like he can get there first just in time. Totally worthwhile. Even if he doesn't do any damage to Crisis on this item, he's getting away with it at this point. It's just worth its own weight in gold. Because now he can move in on red armor at will. There we go. That's what he really wanted. And now, yeah, this is a nasty fight. Just run right into the LG. All of it hits. Holy crap. Two on one now. Now a big part of that other side of the map is the yellows. This map is a lot more gracious when it comes to yellow control. That'll tie it back up two on two once again. It's a really nice rocket play out of Crisis. Actually gonna take a quick look at him as he takes yet another frag down to 12 health. A gun blade could ruin him right now. Yep, there it is, punched in the dick. Crisis taking away rocket launcher. Looking for the Mega now. With only Rocket Archer, this could be a very messy fight. He's not going to want to stick around too long. There we go. Gets out of there kind of cleanly. Wants to stay hidden. A little bit reluctant to pick up that yellow armor. And, and really, like, War Cell is so much more than just a quick clone. It polishes up so many little things. And one of those little things is the fact that the green, yellow, and red armors all have distinct sounds. It's just, like, brilliant. Something small like that that nobody else would ever think about. And they're just like, yeah, well, let's make it a little bit better. I love that. That's super cool. Anyway, three on three. Much tighter match than the last one here so far. Red's going to be up and uncontested from Midget. That's actually a problem for Midget there. Crisis is been being given a lot more rope here than he was in the last map. Yeah, Midget getting caught with his pants down. That's not good. You ever see... Never mind, I'm not gonna be gross. <laughs> but Crisis is getting a lot more unanswered shots now. It's just a lot less aware of where Crisis is at any one moment. So 13 seconds left to Mega. Coin flip too, yeah, that's right. Warsaw was the, uh, the first game with an in-game coin flip. How about that? Other than, you know, the Pokemon trading card game for, for Game Boy. Man, I hated that shit. Like, why am I playing this on the Game Boy? Why is there coins? This is dumb. Anyway, sorry. I haven't thought about that game in years. About five and a half minutes, we're still tied here. Three on three. Crisis staying silent. Ah, no, he's actually picked up the yellow armor there. Sort of ballsy, but... Oh, man, there's Midget. Trying to stay hidden, but there's the Rocket Pop. Thanks, friend, for that. But that'll be a beautiful frag out of Crisis. Sure, you could have taken a lot less damage in that, but now... He can leave up the red for 
midget and take away some yellows here to bolster that up. It's really going to come down to this mega in five seconds, but man, having that yellow armor is nice. Having a red would be nicer coming into mega. But no, it looks like midget's not going to show up at all. Holy crap. Oh, complete whips on both of those shots, and he really needed them too. Catching your opponent going over to that 50 health is kind of critical. But man, he's taking so much hurt here, but he's still able to push it in and get the frag, bringing this back up to a lead of two frags. Four and a half minutes left on the clock. And now Midget decides to, to go balls out. Interesting. Now Midget decides to get mad, but it's going to be Midget finishing off with Gunblade there. You can cook for me if you want to, Rotten Rose. That would be... Okay for me. Unless you want burritos or something. Ah, she didn't bring that bad. Anyway. Price is slowing things down a little bit now. I mean, forcing Midget to go on the offensive is one of the things he wasn't able to do last round. It's working a lot better for him now. But still, it's only one frag too close to call at this point. Nice. Red Armor is stolen away, and the rocket pops means that Midget is going to be a little bit weaker coming into the next fight. Let's go ahead and see what he's working with. Well, he's almost at 100, 100, almost. But coming from the bottom of the stairs is just a poor way to start that fight. 31 health for him. Only a little bit more for Crisis. So Mega's up, and he's looking for the drop down. Nope. Midget's already there, but it's going to be a trade between the Mega and the Yellow Armor. But hey, that plus 50 health, I mean, that puts Midget at 113. The fact that he was so weak going into the Mega really means that Crisis got the better end out of that trade off. So that means that Red Armor will be in the hands of Crisis there. Ah, uh -oh. oh, crap. Do I have the female model on, on both of them? Oh, it's because of... Okay, yeah. I need to change my team setup. I'll do that between this map and the next one. Don't worry. But that'll tie it back up five on five. Crisis now going on the silent, knowing that he's got nothing to work with. There's a, a YA, which is awesome, but if he just turns right now, he'll be like, oh, no, he should have turned left. Like, having a YA coming into that room, that's plenty enough to justify being there, but man, he's still going to spawn on the red armor. Don't tell him that it was already there. I mean, it'd just make him sad. But one frag is a lot to have at this point. Oh, was that rocket pop initially? It's just amazing damage. But he's, got, he's only got Plasma. Like, he could finish with Plasma. He could finish with Gunblade now. Let's see if Crisis can keep this thing going. Mega's going to be up. But no, stolen right up from under him. But with the, the limited amount of weapons that he had. I mean, sure, you could, you could throw grenades down there, but you're just going to be hurting everybody. Nice. So only a minute and 40 seconds left on the clock here. Crisis back up top map, floating around this mega. Not giving him a whole lot to work with, actually. Oof. It looks like Midget's trying to avoid some of these fights, but hey, close range, leveraging, getting some really good initial rockets. Yeah, I can see the just justification for pushing that forward. Whoa, and after a rocket fight like that, they go directly for the red. Holy crap, Crisis really overextended himself there. It's five frags in a row for, for Midget, but I'm going to keep my eyes on Crisis. He's the one who's got to bring this back in the next minute. I mean, that was a really nasty fight. I mean, that was a, all right, one of us is going to red and one of us isn't sort of fight. Christ is showing up there. That was just asking for way too much. But nice rails coming out of Midget, and a rail like that may just seal the deal for him. Four frags, 40 seconds. It's got to happen. All right, but Midget's looking pretty safe here. Oh, nicely done. Laying an ambush at the yellow armor, which is why that corner is so amazing in this map. But that might just seal the deal right there. Look at me saying might like it's going to be any other way. Now, you know what the score is now. Even though I'm not using the spec code, you should still be able to read it. Oh, oh no, Crisis killing himself. All right, but there we have it. Ten on four. Midget taking it away.